What's up my friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about smoking cocktails. I don't know if you remember, but about a year ago I released a video on how to make a smoked old fashioned using a smoke top. This smoke top immediately became a must in my bar kit. And I know it's the same for a lot of you. But now I've been using it for a year and I wanted to share with you some of the discoveries that I made to make the most out of it. So guys, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We're gonna smoke some cocktails together right now. Before we start, I would like to say what we're gonna do today, you can do it with whatever smoking technique that you want. It doesn't have to be that smoked up. You can use a smoke gun. You can even use a barbecue smoker. But personally, I've been smoking cocktails for years. And after I tried the smoked up, it has become my favorite tool. It is small, reliable, efficient, and easy to carry. So obviously I recommend it. If you don't already have one and would like to change that, I'm gonna link it in the description down below. But full disclosure, this is an affiliate link, but I guarantee, don't worry, I would never talk about something I don't trust on this channel. And this, I've been using it for a year, and I can assure you, it is a great device. So now, for the fun part, I'm gonna demonstrate my tips with three different cocktails. We're gonna start with the Windows Kiss. I think the first thing that comes to mind when you wanna smoke a cocktail is just to smoke the whole thing. But some cocktails are better than others for that kind of usage. I recently made the Widow's Kiss on the channel. If you haven't watched the video yet or if you wanna have the full recipe, I'm gonna link the video up here. For those of you who don't know what that cocktail is, it's just a brilliant mix of apple brandy, yellow chartreuse, benedictine, and angostura bitters. For me, this screams smoke me. I tried it and it was Fantastic. So I thought of using that cocktail as an example to show you the basics on how to smoke a cocktail. First, I would say less is more. Just a few wood chips will work a long way and it will also yield better smoke. If you pack on the other end the chimney with a lot of wood chips, it will easily overpower the cocktail. Next, before you smoke the cocktail, you have to determine what you really want. Is it a bigger aroma or taste of the smoke? That's very different and it's also very important. If you want a bigger aroma, you need to smoke the cocktail after it's been poured. On the other hand, if you want a bigger taste of smoke, you have to smoke the drink earlier in the process. For the Widow's Kiss, I wanted the taste of the smoke. And I realized that when you want to have a stronger taste of smoke in a cocktail served up, it's better when you smoke the mixing glass right before pouring the cocktail in the coupe. On the other end, when you want to smoke a cocktail served on the rocks, it's better when you smoke the glass with the ice before pouring the cocktail. That way, the essential oils of the smoke will stick to the surface of the glass and the ice, and when you're gonna pour the cocktail in, it's all gonna blend together for the perfect taste of smoke. And also something that's very important, if you wanna avoid butane taste, light your torch away from your device and just a fraction of second before will suffice. The aroma of the smoke are very well integrated in the cocktail, like if it was slightly infused. The apple from the Calvados, the spices from the liquor are flavors that pair very nicely with the smoke. The cocktail, before being smoked, already has something that's comforting, and now the addition of the smoke really accentuate that. This is something I think you have to keep in mind when you want to decide what cocktail to smoke. Will this elevate this comforting feeling or will this create a contrast? Because that's something that's also possible when we talk about refreshing cocktails. And this will lead us to the second point of today's video. For this one, we're gonna smoke pineapple to make smoked pineapple juice for a smoky chartreuse swizzle. I think when it comes to sour cocktails or refreshing cocktails, it's always better to smoke one ingredient rather than smoking the whole cocktail. This will keep the balance and the freshness of the drink while still having some beautiful contrast. You can also smoke herbs, other fruits or syrups. The only limit is your imagination. So for the ingredients we're gonna need green chartreuse, falernum, fresh lime juice and a pineapple. First, you're gonna fill halfway up a large sealable glass container with small pieces of pineapple. It's important to cut the pineapple in small pieces because that means more surface for the smoke to stick to. And the reason we fit it only halfway up is to make sure we're gonna have enough smoke for the taste. Now you can smoke the pineapple, close the lid and give it a little shake to make sure the smoke will be in contact with all the surface of the pineapple. Now you're gonna let it infuse for five minutes before repeating the process one more time. 
And now we're ready to juice it. Obviously, if you have a juicer, use that. It's better, it's less work. I didn't have any, so I used an immersion blender. That also works, but that means that we're gonna have to strain it through a fine mesh strainer in order to get the juice out. And that's it. All we have to do left is to bottle it up. Now we have a delicious smoked pineapple juice and we're ready to make the cocktail. First, in a tiki mug, we're gonna pour one ounce and a half or 45 mils of green chartreuse, half an ounce or 50 mils of falernum, one ounce and a half or 45 mils of smoked pineapple juice, and one ounce or 30 mils of freshly squeezed lime juice. We're gonna fill our tiki mug halfway up with crushed ice and we're gonna swizzle it to cool it down to incorporate all the ingredients together and to emulsify it slightly. And after that, we're simply gonna top it up with more crushed ice all the way up. We're gonna garnish it with pineapple fronds and there you go, my friends, this is how we make a smoky chartreuse swizzle. For me, this is a great way to show that we can treat smoke as an ingredient rather than a whole team in the cocktail. We keep the freshness of the drink intact, we create contrast and we develop beautiful complexity with the flavor of the smoke. So now for the last tip of today's video, we're gonna use a technique that's pretty similar but with a whole different purpose. We can also use the smoke top in resourcefulness mode to recreate flavors that we may not have access to. And to demonstrate this last point, we're gonna make the Boy Scout penicillin. Sometimes we're craving for something and we don't have everything to make it. It was my case recently. I was dying for a penicillin, but the only scotch I had on end was monkey shoulder. And if you know what a penicillin is, you know that what makes this drink so good is the float of peated scotch. So I asked myself, even though if I knew it would be completely different, no offense to the scotch snub out there, what if I use my smoke top to mimic that delicious peated scotch? Hmm, I tried it and the result was surprisingly amazing. So for the ingredients, we're gonna need scotch, ginger, lemon juice, and honey syrup. For this experience, I think it is very important to use a generic kind of scotch. Here, Monkey Shoulder was the perfect candidate for a blended scotch, but you can also use a mild single malt if you want. Just make sure that it's unpeated. So first, we're gonna pour eight ounces of our scotch in a large glass sealable container. We need to make sure that we only fill one third of the container because we need some room for the smoke. Then to that, we're gonna add 35 grams of fresh ginger in small pieces. Now we can smoke the scotch, close the lid, shake it, and let it infuse for 15 minutes. Then we're gonna repeat the smoking process, reclose the lid, and then we're gonna let it infuse for an additional six hours. After six hours, the ginger and the smoke flavors will be perfectly incorporated in the scotch. So we can strain it through a fine mesh strainer, bottle it up, and we're ready to make the cocktail. So in a cocktail shaker, we're gonna pour two ounces or 60 mils of our infused scotch. Then we're gonna add one ounce or 30 mils of freshly squeezed lemon juice, and three quarters of an ounce or 22.5 mils of two to one ratio honey syrup. We're gonna fill our shaker with ice and give it a good shake for about 10 seconds. And we're gonna strain the cocktail over a beautiful big block of clear ice. So now we have the flavor of the smoke in the cocktail, but we don't have it much on the nose. And we all know that what makes or break a great penicillin is the aroma of the peated scotch. So in order to try to mimic that smell, we're gonna use the smoke top to smoke the top of the cocktail to make a float of smoke. And there we go, my friends. This is how we make the Boy Scout penicillin. Cheers. For me, this cocktail was a hit. We were able to add smoke flavor and smell to the cocktail while still keeping the freshness of the lemon. Obviously, the end result was somewhat different than a classic penicillin, but overall, when you're craving for one and you don't have all the ingredients, this is a great way to please yourself. So to wrap things up today, here's a few bullet points that you don't wanna forget when you wanna add smoke to your cocktails. First, ask yourself, do you want a bigger smoke taste or aroma? Do you want to create a contrast or homogeneous smoke flavor? But most of all, don't be afraid to experiment because sometimes great surprise can happen. So guys, that's it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Hit the like and the bell if you want to be notified when we post a new cocktail video. Until then, thank you very much again. Have a great day and see you very soon.